and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com, where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. If you'd like to support our show, please use our Amazon affiliate link below. Today, a plant care video on Calathea, which nowadays is also known as Joe Persia. Recently, botanists did reclassify some Calathea and put them in the Joe Persia family of plants. They will do that. It does make it a little confusing, but just know that both plant plant types of plants, Jopertia, Calathea, they all have the same growing requirements. So if you have something that's labeled Calathea or Jopertia, this is going to apply. This plant is often called the peacock plant as well because of the, its colorful peacock-like leaves. And it isn't one of the most easiest plants to grow, but it's definitely worth growing for its beautiful foliage. And I'm going to talk to you obviously about how to ensure that they stay happy and healthy for you. They range in size from a few inches up to three feet depending on the variety, but for the three feet that's going to be a plant that is an older plant, a more mature plant. They come in a range of colors um, including shades of green and pink and red and purple and white. Uh, this one here is known as Dotty. And as you can see, it has a beautiful purple and then a deeper, almost black, but deep burgundy color to it. Gorgeous. And then the, the scallops leaves on there really look, get, get like a, a silvery tinge to them. And I also love how they open. This looks, looks like a, uh, a tube of, of paper rolled up and they unroll from there and just gorgeous, gorgeous plants. This is known as White Star, and it does have some white in it as well as some of that, of, of that pink in there too. And you can see the variegations are just gorgeous on them. They look like they've been painted on, and they actually, to me, they are really works of art. Um, a lot of plants are works of art, but, but the Calatheas in particular are definitely works of art. They come from tropical climates of the world, and they, um, as mentioned, are up to three feet, but more in the range if you're gonna get about a foot high, maybe a little bit less wide. And they aren't, they are, they're fairly slow growing, medium to slow growing. So it's not something that's gonna grow like crazy for you. Uh, you're, you have to give it some time, but that's okay because uh, you want to make sure that it uh, grows well for you as well. So they come from the, pol the, the family of plants known as Morantasia. And that is actually the same family of plants in which prayer plant is. So you probably notice that they do have kind of a prayer plant look to them, especially uh, ex especially dotty there. They also do close their leaves up. They do go into prayer form at night as the prayer plant does. So they will um, do that at night for you as well, which is really fun to see if you if you happen to catch it, ha happen to catch it going uh, the, the plant uh, folding up in prayer at night. Speaking of uh, night, uh, lighting. So let's start, let's, let's talk about how to keep these plants healthy and happy for you. And a, a note here, any videos I mentioned in this video, I will put links for below. I also have timestamps below for you. So if you wanna know about the lighting or the watering, you can go ahead and skip ahead to that as well. Okay, so lighting as mentioned. The Calathea and Jopertia both thrive in moderate to bright indirect light. This type of lighting ensures the most bold colors and distinctive patterns for the leaves. If you don't get enough light for them, their variegation is going to become duller and they may, the new leaves may not even be very variegated for you. So keep that in mind. The lighting is really important to keep them looking their best and to and keep them growing their best. So medium bright is probably the best description for it. However, avoid direct sunlight because any direct sunlight will burn these plants and sunburn on these leaves is not pretty. It will look bleached out or even uh, depending on the plant, turn the leaf will turn, turn white. 
Uh, so I do have a video on what to do if you've sunburned your plants, but try to avoid it in the first place. So placing the calathea a few feet from especially east or western window is a good idea. East you can go a little closer because that's a milder morning light, but with the west facing window, definitely three to four feet away from that window. Now this will depend if you have any obstructions outside of the window, say, uh, say, pl say a plants that are uh, bushes or trees that are that are um, providing some coverage but be careful uh, as mentioned about the sunburn they also do really well in full spectrum lighting they love full spectrum lighting so that's another alternative and you won't get any sunburn with that as well okay watering this plant is very thirsty it's considered pretty thirsty however like all house plants like I always mentioned to avoid root rot don't overwater them. Just because you hear they're thirsty doesn't mean they want to be drowned every day. If you think that you may have given your plant root rot, I do have a root rot playlist. I'll put the link below for that as well. So on the moisture meter, I would go when it's in between four and five on the moisture meter. And you also your finger, it's starting to dry out if you stick your finger in the first inch or so. Uh, and also if the pot is lighter weight than it was, especially that helps if that helps Hap, you can do that if it's a plastic pot you can determine that so the just keeping a good eye on it so it doesn't dry out and as mentioned not not going too crazy with the water also make sure to but keeping basically evenly moist is what you want to look for and evenly moist means that the plant is the, the top of the plant is still moist the top of the part of the soil is still moist uh, that's what that means. It's still f somewhat moist before you water again, but it wouldn't be sopping wet. It would be somewhat moist. Okay. Also remember too that these plants, uh, when you water any plants, but considering that they are from the tropics and a lot of houseplants are from the tropics and just houseplants in general because they're growing in your home where it's warmer, you always want to water with more tepid to warm water, never cold water. Cold water will cause root dieback, it can cause spotting on leaves, and it can cause a lot of problems for your plants. And so the calatheas especially do not like cold water, so make sure to use warm water when watering. They're also sensitive to fluorides and, and in the water. I do have a video on fluoride and how it can cause problems for your plants. You Using rainwater, distilled water, reverse osmosis water instead is often a good idea for these plants that will help prevent them from having growth problems, in particular crispy edges and also brown leaf tips. So brown edges and brown leaf tips. There's other reasons for that on these plants as well because they are notorious for the browning uh, edges and leaf tips and, and I'll cover that as we go here too. Underwatering is one of those. So if you, that's another reason why you wanna make sure that you water on a continuous basis. In the winter time, you will be cutting back some on watering like you will, you should be doing with the rest of your plants because it's cooler, they're not growing as fast, so keep that as, in mind as well. Now, the other reason that the calathea may get browning crispy edges and leaf tips is low humidity. As mentioned, they come from tropical locales in the world, so they do uh, need a higher humidity than some house plants. 50% plus is uh, what you want to be looking for. And a great tool to see what the humidity level is in your house, instead of guessing, is a hygrometer. They're inexpensive. I'm putting a link below for one for you. It also tells you temperature, which you're going to want to know. I, I will talk about in the next section as well. So, so look for the most humid areas of your house, providing they have sufficient lighting. And also keep in mind that there are ways to humidify the area surrounding the plants so that they're happier as well. So some of those uh, ways, and I do have videos, lots of videos, I have humidity playlists and lots of videos on creating humidity, but I would suggest trying all of these various different ways to humidify them, or, or a lot of these, 
And if you do a lot of these together, it will bring the humidity up just enough where the plant will, will be happy. So misting is good, but you have to do it on a regular basis. You can't just do it once a week, uh, preferably a few times throughout the day. So keep a, a, a mister nearby. Um, I'll put a link for a great mister I like down below uh, that really does a nice fine mist. Also putting them on a humidity tray. I have a, a video for how to do that, how to make one of those as well. And another really great thing to can keep in mind is grouping plants. Plants will humidify one another because they transpire. When they transpire, they emit water vapor from mostly from the underside of their leaves. And when they do that, they will humidify their neighbors. So the more plants you have, the more humid your air will be and the happier your calathea will be. Now, if you're in a very, very uh, low humidity um, environment, you can also run a humidifier for these plants. And I have a video on doing that as well. And that will make them a lot happier as well. So some really good ideas there for increasing humidity to make your calathea happier. Temperature, as I mentioned. So calatheas like 70, they, they try to keep to to aim for 70 to 90 degrees. You could go a little lower than 70, but keeping in mind they are tropical plants, they're not going to like it when you go much lower than 65. They better range is 70 to 85, but you could go uh, hotter into the 90s um, and they'll still be okay. It's the lower temperatures where they're gonna have more problems because they don't like to get cold. They also don't like drafts, so keep them away from doors, a place where doors are opening and closing a lot, or an open window, and heating and air conditioning vents will really wreak havoc for these plants. Uh, not only are, will they create a draft on the plants, but heating and air conditioning also dries out the air so it's going to cause low humidity around the plants and you're going to have more problems uh, with with the plant then at that point you if you if you live in a really cold climate and obviously you need and maybe you have a small space that would be the time to pull out the humidifier to 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 um, offset the drying of the air that's caused by by the, uh, the heating and air conditioning, and that would be forced air, heating and air conditioning. Okay, so another thing you need to do to keep these plants really pretty looking good for you is fertilizing. You want to fertilize them spring through fall with an organic fertilizer monthly. It's really important that you use organic fertilizer on these plants. Chemical fertilizers are known to create uh, Chem chemical uh, fer fertilizer burn and that will it shows up a lot of the time as crispy edges and brown leaf tips and as mentioned these plants are susceptible to that so you don't want to use something that's going to cause that the when you're looking for an organic fertilizer and i'm putting some link below for links below for some organic fertilizers including my green gourmet houseplant food when you are looking for the fertilizers, look for something with a low NPK. So that's something that's below 10, 10, 10, 5, 5, 5, 4, 4, 4, 3, 2, 2, something like that, 2, 3, 3, 2, 3, 2. Those, that's an indication that it is an organic fertilizer. It's a lot lower, that is a lot lower NPK, and it's gonna be a lot lower in the possibility of burning your roots, which will cause root dieback and can cause root brought for your calathea and slow and poor growth and for those brown browning leaf tips. Repotting. You do want to repot every once in a while, generally every one to two years. A lot of times it may not even be that the plant particularly has grown so much that it needs to be repotted, but you do want to get them out of the soil after one to two years because even if you're using organic fertilizers, all fertilizers have salts and the salt will build up in the soil over time and that will cause the browning the browning and crispy edges and just some and, and some slowing of growth so repotting is a really good thing to do but as mentioned it's not something you have to do that often use a high quality organic potting soil that retains moisture so it contains something like peat moss or core and also that it is well draining so containing perlite or pumice for draining as well. 
You want to use a plastic or glazed ceramic pot when you pot these plants up, not a terracotta pot. Terracotta pots are very porous and the moisture tends to um, leave the soil a lot quicker than uh, the other types of pots. And with these plants being as thirsty as they are, it just is really setting you up for having a drought condition, which it, the plant is not going to respond well to. You can also mulch the top of the soil. You will see that the white star there does have some, um, some mulch on top of it. Actually, that's some, some core that I used for mulch. You can use core for mulch. You can use peat moss for mulch as well. And that will also help to retain moisture in the soil. And I do have a video on mulching and, and the benefits of mulching your houseplants as well. So the last thing is pests. Uh, one of the most more common pests is spider mites. However, spider mites like dry conditions. So if you do have spider mites, you may not be keeping your calathea moist enough, the soil moist enough. So keep that in mind. If you have had an incident of spider mites, you can treat it with uh, insecticidal soap, neem oil, and also horticultural oil those are those will all suffocate the spider mites and then also rinse the plant on about a monthly basis to keep it nice and moist and rinsed off they may also occasionally get mealy bugs for mealy bugs you can use neem oil insecticidal soap and you can also use isopropyl alcohol either 70 or 91 percent and that will kill the mealy bugs so there you go for growing these gorgeous plants, Calathea. They are just, just really, really nice to have in your indoor garden because they do, as mentioned, they're just so gorgeous. So if you keep these growing tips in mind, that will help you keep them looking healthy and happy and really pretty in your indoor garden. Thank you for stopping by today. Please leave any comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And please check the bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos are released.